In this package, I supposed to have a unique Chinese mini ITX motherboard with LJ1151 socket. The motherboard is good for NAS devices, and the Chinese claim that it supports Xeon E3, V5, V6, as well as core CPUs from 6, 7, 8, and 9 series. So let me take it out of the box and see what I have got. As you can see, the packaging is very basic. Uh, we have a plain brown cardboard box with no titles, say, uh, and it is also very tiny. Inside the box, we have the IO shield, a single SATA cord, and then this kind of bubble wrapped motherboard. So, already from the packaging, we can see that this is a very budget motherboard. Nevertheless, just looking at the PCB and feeling it with my hands, it doesn't feel that bad. In fact, it actually feels pretty decent. Of course, I don't know if it's gonna be any good in the real world usage and how many issues we will get with the BIOS and CPU compatibility, but what strikes me is that the motherboard came with the battery installed. Usually, whenever you buy a motherboard from AliExpress, you don't get the battery. In this case, the battery is here. So, a quick walk through the motherboard specification. Uh, here we have LJ1151 socket and the seller claims that the motherboard supports Xeon E3, V5 and V6, as well as core CPUs such as Core i3, i5, i7, i9 from the 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th generation. Here it is important to understand that all these CPUs use exactly the same socket and the limitation of compatibility is enforced by Intel and implemented in the motherboard BIOS. It is already known that it is possible to modify desktop motherboards to work with the Xeons and the other way around, but in this case I have a hope that all the modifications are already in the BIOS and we can just plug and play all the CPUs on this motherboard. While speaking of the socket, let me open up this lid and just ensure that I don't have any damaged pins. And it uh, seems to be that everything is intact, at least at the moment I cannot spot any damaged pins. A part of the socket with the promised uh, rich CPU compatibility, we also have two slots for DDR4 memory, which means a theoretical maximum capacity of 64 gigs, 32 gigs per module. Then we have all sorts of uh, connectivity required for NAS. We have 8 SATA 3.0 ports, then over here we have PCI Express 8.0 port. I really hope that this X8 can be split into X4, X4 using PCI Express buffication, but I will test that if BIOS has this option or no. A part of the PCI Express X8 slot, we also have an M.2 slot, which is supposed to be PCI Express 3.0 X4 for NVMe SSD drives. Over here, this seems like a micro SD slot card, but I really don't know what this is. And then we have here a pile of different jumpers, which I'm also not quite sure what these are about, since the motherboard doesn't have a single manual. This one is a connector for the front panel buttons and LEDs. Then we have two COM ports, which is pretty unusual, but I guess those who want it, they have it. Over here we have a USB 3.0 header for the front panel. And this one, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Um, then we have 24 pin motherboard power over here, 4 pin CPU power over here. The VRAM is also pretty basic, so I would not install here i7, which is also not needed for a NAS device. And we have two 4-pin fan connectors. I hope that at least a smart fan with the 4-pin PWM fans work. The rear I.O. is quite interesting. We have four USB 3 ports, then here we have display port and HDMI. So if your CPU has iGPU, you can use these. There is no IPMI on the motherboard, but we have four network jacks or network connectors. If I remember correctly, these Ethernet adapters are 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapters from Intel, and you have four of them. So that shall be enough to build your local firewall or your local router using PFSense or something like that. Additionally, we have this tiny little jack to uh, connect here headset. Then on the back side, we also have an M.2 slot to install, uh, I believe this is for Wi-Fi cards, but I might be wrong. I 
don't even remember if this is mSATA for mSATA SSDs or this is to install Wi-Fi cards. I think it is to install Wi-Fi and uh, modems for mobile networking, but I might be wrong. Anyway, if you're interested in this motherboard to see how it performs and what you can expect from it, then follow me on my main channel. The detailed video review about this motherboard will be available there. I believe I have a couple of CPUs for the LG1151 socket, so at least some CPU compatibility I will be able to verify.